Hi, welcome back to Wayfinder. Today I'm talking about improvised direction finding again. And today I'm going to talk about the shadow stick. So what is a shadow stick? A shadow stick is just simply a stick placed in the ground, allowing you to observe where its shadow falls. And then monitoring this over time, we can see as the shadow moves, this will allow us to extrapolate an east-west line that is extremely accurate and from that get our north and south points. The easiest way to explain this is simply to show you. So I was cut away now to a quick time lapse of, of a shadow stick that I set up earlier and we'll have a look and see how it works. So that's a shadow stick. As you can see, pretty simple to set up and use. Uh, there's a few pros and cons to a shadow stick. One of the big pros for a shadow stick is the fact that you can do it with virtually no equipment. You can just find a stick, place it in the ground and monitor its shadow over time. Another big pro is the fact that you don't need to know the time, the start time or the finish time. All you need to do is monitor when the shadow breaks the circle the first time and when it breaks it again the second time and it gives you a very accurate east-west line. There are, of course, some cons to the shadow stick. One is to do it like that can take a considerable amount of time. The one you just watched there was shot over four hours. Another con is that you need a clear view of the sky. You can't do this in, in a rainforest or if you're against a cliff line or something like that. Also, on a cloudy day, it might not work. Now having to wait four hours to get a result from a shadow stick is obviously a fairly big con. But there's a couple of shortcuts I can do to bypass that. that. One thing that I can do is just monitor the, the travel of that shadow over 15 or 30 minutes and mark those points. And that will give me an approximate east-west line. This is not as accurate as waiting the full two or four or six hours or however long it takes, but it gives me at least something to go off to find my north, south, east and west. Another thing I can do is using a little bit of knowledge about how the sun travels around the earth or, or the rotation of the earth and the way the sun travels through the sky. I know that the sun travels 15 degrees every hour. So from that I can extrapolate how far the shadow will move before it breaks the circle again if I know the start time of, which, when, of when I've started monitoring the shadow. So for instance, should I have set this shadow stick up at nine in the morning, then and knowing that the sun will reach its zenith at approximately midday, I can then expect the shadow will break the circle again at around three in the afternoon. That's six hours. Six hours of 15 degrees of travel will give me 90 degrees. Now 90 degrees is a fairly easy angle to measure. All I'll do is take a line from down the shadow of the stick and straight across the opposite side of the circle. And from there I can draw another line at 90 degrees. Where that line breaks the circle is approximately where the shadow would once again break the circle in six hours time. I mark a straight line between those two points and I have an east-west line. It won't be as accurate as waiting the six hours, but it'd be quite accurate and enough to work off. Now, if it was 
from 10 till two in the afternoon, that would be 60 degrees. Now it might be a little difficult to uh, envision exactly how these shortcuts work. So let's just go and have a look at it now. To set this shadow stick up, what I've done is I've placed this stake in the ground here. I have these stakes here, which I'll use to mark uh, various points where the shadow lies. Of course, I have my trusty compass to check everything when I'm done. And I have this cord here, which I'll use to inscribe the circle and also get my angle so I can predict where the shadow is going to fall at later, later times. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark the edge of the circle where the shadow is currently falling. To double check exactly where that is, in case it's a little distinct on the ground, I can just bring my hand to the top of that stick and I can see the shadow is falling right there. I then use this cord and another one of my stakes and I'm going to inscribe a circle the same radius as to where that shadow is currently falling. Okay, now that's done, and I have my circle here. So, currently the time is 10.30, so I know that in approximately three hours, the shadow will once again break the edge of this circle. So that's going to be at 15 degrees an hour, that's gonna give me 45 degrees. Now to find 45 degrees is, is really very easy. All I'm going to do is using my stick once again, I'm going to take a 90 degrees, and to get the 90 degrees, I just stand on the other side of the stick, and using one eye, I can see when the shadow disappears, and I'm gonna mark the point on the circle where that is. Where that 90 degrees breaks the circle. <laughs> okay. From there, I then take a 90 degree, And I'm just gonna eyeball this. And once again, I'll mark the circle there. Now to get my 45 degrees, really easy. I simply take my piece of string and measure from this stake to this stake. I then come back here and here is my halfway point. This will give me 45 degrees. I mark this point here. Now this, if I've done everything correctly, should be an east-west line. North is in that direction. This is a direct east-west line. Really quick and simple. The only thing I need to know was the understanding that the sun is gonna move 15 degrees in the sky every hour and what my start time was. So I can extrapolate out from that with the sun reaching its zenith at about midday when the shadow is once again gonna break the circle. Now for the second method. If I don't know the time or if I'm shorter on time, all I'm gonna do now is wait for half an hour and I'm gonna mark that shadow stick again or mark where that shadow is falling. Again, at that point, it won't be on the circle, but it will give me a fairly accurate east-west line. It's been half an hour and as you can see, the shadow has moved a little way from when we started. Uh, if the theory is correct, 
it's moved 7.5 degrees. So all I'll do is I'll once again confirm the end of the shadow because it's just slightly indistinct in this darker ground. Yep, right there. Okay, so now I have my original shadow marker here and the second one after half an hour. I'll just lay a relatively straight stick between the two of these and this should be uh, an approximate east-west line. Okay, I'll have a look with my compass. Okay, so that's about, it's about 10 degrees out. It gives me a pretty good indication. Um, certainly not as good as waiting the full three hours, which it will take from for this one to actually break the other side of the circle or doing what I did there, that, that other cheat method where I just used a piece of string to give me that 45 degree angle. But it's a pretty good approximation. Should I wait another half an hour? I have a third, third marker in there. I'll probably find it'll be slightly more accurate again. So there you have it. A couple of shortcuts there for using a shadow stick. First one there where knowing that the sun's gonna move 15 degrees every hour, I can work out the angular difference between when I first take my shadow reading and when the shadow is next when I break the circle. And that's, that's qu quite accurate doing that, okay? Uh, in this case, because this was set up at about 10.30, then I knew that it would be about three hours for the shadow to break the circle again, being 45 degrees. So all I've done is I've measured a 90 degrees. I've gone halfway between the 90 degrees, give me my 45 degrees. And as we saw, that was a very accurate east-west line. Now, what I've done here is I've just waited half an hour and put another peg in the ground. It's given me a fairly approximate line. The beauty of this method is I don't need to know the start time or the finish time. I just get a shadow stick set up, put a marker in the ground, wait a little while, put another marker in the ground, and I've got a pretty good east-west line. So there you have it. That's a shadow stick. That's some real caveman navigation there. I hope you found that interesting or got something out of it. If you liked it, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. If there's anything you'd like me to cover off on, uh, or anything you want to know, or if you've got any witty comments or anything like that, please let me know in the comments down below. Whatever it is that you're into, I hope that you plan to get after it again soon. Thanks very much for watching, and have a nice day.